Hello, welcome to this lesson of the Laplace Transform Tutor. Up to this point, we have learned how to take Laplace transforms using our table of transforms that we have derived. Here, what we're going to do is begin to talk about the inverse transform, getting some practice at looking at a function of S, the, the Laplace domain version of, of the function, the transform function, function of S, and go backwards to recover our function of time. So that's a very important skill because ultimately what we'll be doing soon is we'll be transforming our problem into the S domain to solve it and then we always have to transform back to get our function of time. So let's practice that skill right now. We'll start with some easy problems and then we'll work our way up. So if you're given a function of S that's 1 over S minus 2, you want to transform this back to the time domain. So what you need to do first of all is take this function of S and go look over here at what we've already created and see if there's something that matches the general form of what we have and of course you can see that this function here, 1 over s minus lambda, fits the bill. Whatever is over here in this spot just goes into the exponential there. So without really doing any work at all, you can just really write down uh, that f of t that corresponds to this is e to the 2t. The hardest part of inverting a transform is just making sure to not do anything stupid or have any oversight in, 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 or any careless errors is what I'm trying to say. Here you have s minus 2, so some people might put negative 2 here um, as a careless error. So you have to really compare and see what you're doing. You have 1 over s minus 2, here you have 1 over s minus lambda, so it's whatever's in the lambda spot goes there. It's already assuming that there's a minus sign here, so you don't stick an extra minus sign up there. You have to do um, just a careful comparison of whatever it is you're trying to compare with to make sure you're doing the right thing. All right. Now what if you had a function of s? That's 1 over 2s minus 1. And I wanted to invert that to a function of time. So I come over here and I, I look at this 1 over 2s minus 1. Um, I don't see anything that jumps out at me. Um, I see I have this guy, which looks kind of close, but it's not quite the same. This, none of these really look, look uh, very close. But then I realize I can actually kind of beat this into shape. Uh, and kind of force it to look like one of these guys over here. So my advice to you is when you look at a function of s and you're trying to invert it back, first just see if something obviously matches it like it did in the first problem. And if not, see then if you can just use some algebraic manipulations to force it to look like something over there and then you can get what you need to do, get done. So for instance, this function of s, if you think about it, you can pull the 2 out in the bottom and then it would be over here, s minus 1 half. We just factored out the 2, right? And again, this doesn't quite look like anything that we have over there either, but then you realize, um, basically we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides, but then you realize that the inverse Laplace transform is linear also, um, so any constant there can be pulled out. So the bottom line is you can write this, f of t, you can write this as 1 half times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 1 half. The reason you can pull the 1 half out, which is basically a constant here, is because we said from the linearity of the transform it works like an integral. If you have a constant multiplied by something for in an integral, you can pull the constant outside the integral. And the same thing works for the transform, inverse and uh, regular Laplace transform. So we pull that guy out, we take the inverse Laplace of what's left, this, matches exactly uh, what we have uh, for our top guy over there. So we call it 1 half e to the 1 half t. 1 half e to the 1 half t because it's 1 over s minus lambda where this guy goes into this spot. So again, if you can't see originally here something that matches exactly, then what you need to do is kind of beat it into shape yourself. So for our third one, let's say we have a function of s 2 over s to the fifth power, and we want to invert that. Um, now we go over here and we first look and say, well, this doesn't quite match, this doesn't quite match, this looks like it matches, but there's a 5 on the top, uh, that doesn't quite match, but then you realize that you can do exactly the same thing. You can say that f of t, basically what you can do is you can pull the 2 out, right, and then you can take the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s to the fifth power because you can pull constants outside. Now this exactly matches something we have and we're going to use the rule that the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s to the nth power is t to the n minus 1 over 
n minus 1 factorial. This comes directly from the board over there. I just basically write, write it down again so you can have it in front of you here. So what you can then write here is you have 2, right? And then here, in this case, s to the n, right? So 5 is equal to n. So what you have over here is t to the 5 minus 1. You basically stick a 5 where the n is. And then you have 5 minus 1 factorial. So then you can just write a conclusion statement. f of t is 2 times t to the fourth power. And then you have to evaluate this. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the way you can write that is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, and I'm writing it out for you to just to kind of uh, remind you. I don't have to calculate it really because the 2 on the top can cancel with the 2 on the bottom right here. And so at the end of the day, you can say f of t is t to the fourth power. On the bottom, you know 4 times 3 is 12 times 1 is, again, still 12. So this is the function of time, t to the fourth power over 12. So none of these things are hard. They all boil down to looking at your function of s, looking in your table of Laplace transforms, trying to find one that kind of fits the general mold. If you can find one outright that fits the mold, then you can just write the, the uh, function of time down that corresponds to the inverse transform. If you have to do some factoring or pulling out a constant or something, then you know we're just getting practice with that here. But that's essentially what you're trying to do. You're trying to avoid using integrals all the time. We want to use what we have derived already to uh, go back and forth. And you can see that none of these problems are incredibly difficult. They all boil down to looking at our table and going from there. So what we'll do is we'll go on to the next section. We'll continue getting some practice with the inverse Laplace transform. And then I promise you after that, we'll, we'll finally learn why it's useful. We'll solve some real problems where we actually use the Laplace transform and its inverse to solve some differential equations, which really are in all branches of science and engineering. So no matter what class you're taking, um, the Laplace transform always, almost always has some kind of use when you get into upper level engineering courses.